there's another good point here by not your average guest, which is a difference. The higher prices ratio now is about 50% higher to median income compared to 70s and 80s. So the price increase narrative may seem unlikely, maybe stagnant price possible due to high low rates in past few years. So what, what they're saying essentially is like one key difference is our wages back then compared more favorably to the actual price and our, our wages have largely stagnated. Yeah. So I think that's a good that's a good differentiation within all these data points as well. It's a good good point, right? It gets back to home price affordability. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've had home prices go up tremendously, mm -hmm. right? Over the especially over the last two, three years, and you know, 40, 50 percent. And we now have interest rates that have doubled. Yep. You know, so home price affordability is a challenge. This is all stuff on the demand side, though. Mm -hmm. And so while that is a really good point. We got to think about the supply side, yep. right? Supply side talks about what, how much inventory we have and does it support the sales that we have? A normal market would have between roughly six to seven months of inventory and anything below that would indicate that we don't have enough inventory to support the number of sales, which would lead to higher than average home price appreciation. And we've been in the threes, twos, even ones, even lower than one mm -hmm. for the last couple of years. And it takes a long time to build your way out of that. Yeah, yeah totally. So that is going to be here to stay. So it's a good point. Home price affordability is a, a very big, big topic. I get it. But more light needs to be shed on how low of supply we have yeah. because equally, you know, those are both the hands that guide pricing. And the supply problem is a big, big problem. And it is a much harder problem to solve. Like, how do you solve, solve the home price affordability problem? You got to have more availability of home, like do more it. housing offerings, smaller homes, stuff well, like that's that. That's all on the supply side. On the Raise, raise wages. Uh, yeah, you could do that, yeah. right? Raising median incomes will help support home price affordability. That's the demand side. What's the easiest way to make homes more affordable? How about the Fed dropping interest rates? Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, like nobody believes the Fed really wants interest rates to be this high forever. Yep. Yep. Eventually, the Fed is going to drop the Fed funds rate, and that will ease up home price affordability as well. Raising median incomes is the long-term solution, like yeah. you said, though. As we talk about this whole idea of the affordability piece, it also makes me think of hey, not all housing stock is the same here, right? Like I would somebody said earlier in the chat that in the higher echelons of home pricing, there has been more, you know, there has been less stability and like some dips. And what we talk about a lot is this idea that the workforce housing sector right. is uniquely resilient as a sector, as an investment, as a store of value, because in a world where things are becoming more and more unaffordable, that lower, you know, that, that affordable, there's two, there's two definitions here, right? There's affordable housing and there's workforce housing. Workforce housing is essentially workforce housing for people that make 80% the median income. Mm -hmm. And then there's affordable housing that's less than that. That workforce housing and below, there's always going to be people that are trying to get there that are moving into workforce living. And then during hard times, there's people that kind of like graduated up an echelon of housing that hit hard times that have to recede to that workforce housing. Whereas in the above median income, the higher levels of income, there's less of that, right? Mm -hmm. There's only downward pressure, not upward yeah. and downward, right? And let's let's think about why we love to buy investment properties in workforce housing neighborhoods. One of the reasons, one of the five profit centers is net rental income. Mm -hmm. What that means is when you buy the house as an investor, your mortgage payment is lower than the rent that comes in mm -hmm. every single month, right? The rent is higher than the mortgage payment, saying it the other way, and that creates positive cash flow for you. So there's always an, a financial incentive for folks to get in a position to buy houses in workforce housing neighborhoods. Yep. The same is not the it is not the same when you get to upper echelons of home buying. The most expensive homes, the opposite is true. Yep. Right. The rents do not support what the home mortgage payments would be. And therefore you don't have as much of an incentive or as much demand for that. It's not as resilient. Yep. And so you take on more risks, the higher the type of home prices and, and type of neighborhoods that you get into. Yep, makes sense.